up, I've got someone who uh, you could describe as a professional writer come professional tweeter. So I'd like to welcome to the stage David Levis. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Levin, no relation to Adam Levine, but I am a tit. Um, I've never done any public speaking before, so this is probably going to be amazing. Um, I'm David, I, uh, I'm a writer. Um, my background is, oh, where's the clicker thing? There we go, got it. Um, is in TV and online and uh, magazines. Um, where my journalistic uh, achievements include coming up with the nickname Justin Trouser Snake and um, once having Kerry Katona's tongue in my ear. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but now um, my uh, life and my uh, bills and uh, my Ocado home delivery are all powered by tweets as I'm a professional tweeter. Um, so I'm going to chat to you a bit about how oh, I made tweet dreams. Um, it all started on the night of the riots. I just moved to East London. Um, and I actually wasn't much of a tweeter. I was just following the events uh, unfolding there, like most other people. And one of the um, things that people were tweeting about that night was the rumor that the Dolphin Pub um, had, was burning down. Um, and for any of you that don't know the Dolphin Pub, um, it's basically the Cavos of East London. Uh, it's a sort of late night uh, drinking hole where people can dance to uh, club classics until five in the morning. Um, and people, yeah, I had just moved across the road, so I was assuring people that it hadn't burned down. <clears throat> and uh, lots of them were replying saying, oh, you know, thank God for that. It's the only pub I've ever had sex in. And people were saying, um, you know, like talking about all the stuff they got up to in there. I'm really quite angry at the thought that these rioters could have even gone near their favourite pub. Um, so the next day I woke up and was looking for a bit of a distraction from work and I uh, couldn't believe that the Dolphin wasn't on Twitter already in light of the fact there was clear appetite on Twitter for um, them as an establishment. So I decided to set one up. Um, and yeah, I, as I say, <clears throat> at that point wasn't much of a tweet, but found that... Um, the tweets did really well, um, and a lot of people were tweeting about it. Um, and I think on the, d the day after the riots, because understandably, thanks, because uh, a lot of the tweets were very doom and gloom as they would be about the riots, um, it seemed to go down quite well that there was kind of a different perspective, a um, sort of East London hipster wanker perspective. Um, and um, yeah, so I mean, I hadn't really planned for it to be something that would live on beyond the next day, but because it was doing well, I sort of stuck with it. Um, and yeah, quite quickly, it sort of made that transition from appealing to your average hipster to um, famous hipsters, um, like Caitlin Moran and Grace Dent, and lots of famous presenters and uh, hipster bands and stuff. Um, so I thought, well, it's going pretty well. I thought I'll uh, roll with it and kind of keep going. So um, I really sort of spent a lot of time trying things out, um, really understanding Twitter, understanding the importance of speaking to your followers. So really sort of really getting on control of your tone of voice and thinking about who is that follow you. Um, fast forward a few months and the dolphin started dipping its fins into matters outside of uh, the pub, such as the Olympics. When um, this shit tweet about the, uh, the athlete Katrina Johnson Thompson um, for a time was one of the top London 2012 tweets alongside um, Team GB and uh, Gary Lineker. Um, and then obviously it was exciting when she obviously got wind of it and um, then tweeted a response herself, which was really cool. Um, and then yeah, the dolphin has sort of kind of punched up its weight and been among the top tweets for a number of uh, things, such as the great TV show Drugs Live, where this... Uh, <laughs> Um, and yeah, a number of uh, other things as well. And I guess what I was sort of really getting my head around was this idea of entering a big conversation that's happening on Twitter, so the Olympics or Drugs Live, and putting your own spin on it and kind of 
you know, trying to do some, because obviously everyone is trying to be funny and everyone's producing, but you just need to find your niche and sort of stick to that, and it has worked well. Um, but while the dolphin was powering my um, free booze and my East End credibility and my sex life, um, it wasn't paying many bills. But um, then came The Voice, uh, BBC One, via an agency called Telegraph Hill, and uh, people like Adidas, and then some uh, others in the room, who, like Dane Bowers, took things to another level. Um, wow, well, I really did just say that. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, oh yeah, so we've got nice things said about it in some magazines and Time Out. Um, <clears throat> what was exciting for me was being given the opportunity to take what I'd learned from the Dolphin, take things that I'd kind of learned in terms of tone of voice and things that worked, and apply them to bigger things like the voice, um, and then uh, oh, was that last? and then yeah, it went seemed to go pretty well. So um, historically, um, like X Factor and ITV had obviously been much more successful um, online, but the um, voice did pretty well. I tweeted uh, Simon Cowell's mate uh, Sunita, which really pissed him off, and that made some newspaper headlines. But um, you know, it was really exciting to try things out. Um, but, oh yeah, that's Adidas. Just like the other stuff you saw of Adidas earlier, just not quite as good. Um, but one thing I was finding with The Voice and The Dolphin is that people were coming and using the feeds, kind of like magazines or blogs, um, in that they would come and read quite a lot of tweets in one go. So I started to apply some kind of regular um, themes, like uh, features and things um, that people would keep coming back for. So. This is essentially just star signs that I'd taken from like the sun's horoscopes and just made them relevant to the dolphin followers, which normally just means adding the word fuck and uh, some easy learning references. So they have done pretty well. Um, on a Friday, I normally tweet uh, like a drink or something I'm eating with the uh, tagline, fuck it, it's Friday. Uh, I mean, it's real highbrow stuff. Um, and they seem to have done pretty well. But one thing I found has really gone down well on Twitter um, is quizzes. Um, like, tweeters seem to love doing a quiz. So it's pretty simple. Um, I just tweet a few questions, um, and then it's the, when I've finished doing the questions, the first person to send all the answers and the hashtag in one tweet wins the prize, which for the dolphin is normally a Twix and a scratch card, uh, but for the voice it was a bit more. Um, so these are some of the examples. Uh, <laughs> um, so the voice is one uh, did really, really well and trended worldwide. The uh, dolphin, one of the dolphin quizzes, the only time the dolphin has trended, which, considering what the dolphin is, was really funny for me to see it trending, and even funnier by the fact that it got overtaken on the trends by the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, but yes, these, that's basically how, oh, how it works. Um, and then, yeah, just one other thing I wanted to talk about that sort of played a part in my life being powered by tweets was a conversation with a jar of coffee, um, which essentially was just a load of bollocks. Um, but uh, I just tweeted about uh, drinking some coffee. Del Egbert saw it and responded quite bravely, like considering what how the dolphin normally speaks and how sweary it is, it was quite brave of them to enter into that conversation and they did it brilliantly. Um, and what was interesting was how quickly a conversation between an individual or a character and a jar of coffee or and a brand could uh, sort of go so crazy so quickly and attract so much attention. Um, it got loads of people were tweeting about it, um, helped along by this guy who now works at the um, Wall Street Journal, we'll call it possibly the greatest uh, Twitter conversation, could have left possibly out. Um, but yeah, it did really well and it got mentioned lots of blogs and in Metro. Um, and it worked incredibly well for Dow Egberts who I think pretty much doubled their followers, had a lot of people tweeting about them who had never even heard of Dow Egberts before. It's been great for me in terms of, I've had sort of, you know, brands and agencies and stuff speaking to me about it and I've had work on the back of it. And obviously I've got a lifetime supply of free coffee. Um, and then yeah, People put on Storify, got lots of shares, and that's basically it. So this is me and my life powered by Twitter, powered by tweets, and uh, very much loving it. So I guess um, thank folks for the riots.